another artist that's really important um, to the trans community as well as for the performance community at large is Casiles. Um, they're part of the Toxic Titties group um, and did sort of revolutionary protests early on in their career, um, but is sort of the most famous of that group now um, and makes their own work sort of separately from that group. Um, Casiles very much uses a lot of performances that require intense training regiments to transform the artist's form into that of a bodybuilder or mixed martial artist. Um, they've said, I see the body as a social sculpture. Uh, and so you'll see a lot of different plays with um, sort of gender, um, masculinity versus femininity, um, and sort of other... Oh, here's some information about that, sort of the same, some quotes from... Um, Julia Steinmetz, who's part of the Toxic Titties as well. Um, Casiles was also early on in um, Lady Gaga's telephone music video was like Lady Gaga's like, I don't know, sexual interest in the video. They appear sort of very briefly, um, which you can watch. I'll put it on um, Canvas. So some of the early work includes um, Homage to Benglis, uh, which is reflecting on uh, Linda Benglis's art forum advertisement from 1974. Um, it was this very controversial issue in which um, Benglis aggressively posed with a large latex dildo and wearing sunglasses, sort of as a mockery of patriarchy, um, and paid like $3,000 for this ad. Um, and so Casillas wanted to play with this idea um, and sort of substituted, instead of having this sort of um, massive phallus imagery, um, substituted the ripped masculine physique instead um, to kind of shift this cultural landscape and to talk about some of these issues as well. And it's called Lady Face Man Body. So we're going to talk about a couple of performances here. One of the first ones being Tiresias. Um, this one required the artist to stand still, nude for five hours, flush against an ice sculpture of a neoclassical male, to male, male torso until it melted, melted from the artist's body heat. Uh, it was about endurance and transformation, the persistence of contact between masculine and feminine. Um, Tiresias was also a blind prophet of Thebes, famous for being transformed from a man into a woman for seven years, um, and the sculpture kind of melts from pure body heat. Um, and there are videos of all these works on their website, which I've included on canvas, um, but a lot of these are really about endurance. You can sort of imagine sort of the pain that goes through pushing your body up against sort of this piece of ice. Another work is Becoming an Image. Um, this was a performance that was done in total darkness with zero visibility, uh, where Casillas unleashes an attack on a 2,000 pound clay block and delivers a series of kicks and blows in total darkness, only illuminated by flashes of the photographer. Um, very much about, again, um, a sort of endurance and uh, creating sort of sculptural work in this very sort of um, more violent way. Um, the final one is Pissed, um, which is probably the most famous work that Casillas has done and has sort of um, endured uh, because it's been very, rather recently during the Trump presidency. Um, Casillas was quite upset about um, the physical burden placed on an individual body when bathroom access is restricted by discriminatory policy. Um, and so Casillas performed this work for 200 days following the Trump administration's rollback of the Obama-era executive order allowing transgender students to use bathroom matching their chosen uh, gender identity. And so Casillas did this as a sort of protest of that, um, which included urinating in these jugs um, and carrying it around instead of using the restrooms um, and then um, pouring it all into this um, glass container 
or plexiglass in the museum space um, and then going on to urinate in front of people um, as a part of the performance as well. I'm going to play a clip um, from Casile's website. Um, Casile's has probably my favorite um, website here. Give me one moment. Okay. I, I kind of love their website. They have all these sort of um, moving um, headers that make the pages really interesting. But here's a video um, by um, Casile's here that I'm going to play for you. Oops. Wait. I think I passed it. There it is. Okay. We're not going to listen to the whole thing, but here's a tidbit. I've been doing this particular piece since um, February 23rd of this year. So we're coming up close to a 200-day mark. And that date is significant because it is the date that uh, he who shall not be named rescinded uh, an Obama-era order that allowed trans teenagers to piss in their bathroom of choice. Uh, versus uh, the gender that was assigned to them at birth. I have been filling about four liters a day, so close to a gallon. So today is the last day of the collection, which is a real relief because it sucks to piss in a bucket nonstop, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and to carry your urine around on your back and like on ice is a bit socially awkward at times. Um, so I'll be glad to have, um, you know, topped off this, uh, durational performance. Yeah. As a trans person, it doesn't necessarily have all the signifiers to pass as, as male because I choose not to take hormones or have a double mastectomy. I present as a kind of, um, confusion sometimes in the bathroom. Sometimes I'll use the men's room, sometimes I'll use the women's room, honestly, wherever the shortest line is. But um, there's definitely certainly moments where you feel uncomfortable or super self-conscious. Um, and so I think this act of having to kind of hold your piss in many ways hyper-performs this, this feeling that I think many people that are either gender non-conforming or outwardly trans feel on a daily basis. All right, let's go. You can obviously watch the um, film further, or the little clip if, um... Oh, crap. Sorry. Okay. Uh, but I think this work is very powerful and um, clearly has some power um, for people who deal with this sort of, um, this um, issue having to do with bathrooms, which is quite silly, um, in that there's been this sort of outrage um, about um, people using bathrooms that are not assigned to their quote-unquote biological sex. Um, Casile states, it seems insane that I have to make a cube of piss for people to get this idea. I shouldn't have to make this. I shouldn't have to hold my own urine. It's crazy that we have to go to these extremes, but this is the culture that we're living in. The next artist we're going to talk about is Martin Gutierrez. Martin is very interesting. Um, she is an artist, writer, performer, and musician. Um, and a lot of her works kind of um, subvert pop cultural tropes in the exploration of identity, both personal and collective. Um, also addressing sort of race, gender, class, um, ingenuity, culture. Um, and so has kind of played with a lot of different um, pop icons and images, which I really like. Um, she makes billboards, films, magazines that sell identities that she disassembles. So as a um, male to female trans woman, um, she's kind of dealt with these sort of interesting conversations surrounding that um, in some of her sort of early work. And we'll talk about it here. Um, I'm going to show you just some of the spreads and images that she's taken that are really sort of interesting. It all kind of started with this um, 
Billboard in 2016, um, or one of the early works, in which um, she showed herself on this billboard um, and um, started to see sort of the way that people were reacting and talking about these images. And so she started to want to talk about her, the breakdown of her identity um, and what it meant to be a trans woman. And we're going to talk about a couple of series here. Actually, I'm going to skip forward um, because I want to talk about um, some of these early um, works that she did. So she focused on these two sets of series called Girlfriends and Line Up, um, which were about gender and intimacy and fantasy. Um, very much using mannequins and other figures to shift reality. Um, and so both of them from 2014, um, where she kind of like utilized these very luxurious scenes with mannequins as archetypes of beauty um, and to kind of make them look very similar to um, the way that Martine looks, as well as sort of this very particular hyper feminine group that she sort of decided each would look like. Um, and the illusions are seamless. It's easy to mistake what is real and what is artifice. Um, and so this one in particular is supposed to just sort of kind of a relationship between two females. Um, it's supposed to give you the sense that um, Martine and um, the other, the mannequin figure, are kind of in this relationship. So it's this breakdown of these ideas. However, the other one... Um, which is lineups, um, is all mannequins except for Martine. Um, and it makes these very highly sty stylized tableaus. Um, she states, this body of work was my first inclination in realizing that I wanted to be seen as a woman. Uh, Ms. Rosen, who interviewed Gutierrez about lineup series, writes, Martine embodies some of the most seductive and alluring images of the feminine, revealing the way in which the body becomes the work of art itself. Um, Gutierrez says... When I was in the gallery next to my work, viewers didn't recognize that I was the girl in the picture uh, who was using male pronouns at the time. She said it was her first realization that she wanted to transition and be seen as a woman by the world. Um, and so in these images, she portrays kind of these different tropes and female tropes and um, makes all of the women kind of look like her um, in all of the images, right? She's setting up this very particular image and you're supposed to kind of sort of um, you're investigating the image to see which one she is, to think about sort of what is going on in these images, um, what sort of message or information she's trying to provide you with. Going back to that previous series um, that I popped, um, moved our conversation from, um, one of her big words is the indigenous woman, um, in which she made a sort of magazine in 2018, in which it featured sort of these high fashion glamour images um, that were supposed to uh, show her life and um, her individuality as um, a trans woman, but also a um, indigenous woman. Um, and so she um, is enacting not simply the artist as muse, but rather the artist as media mogul, staging guerrilla style seizure and colonization of space in an image based world in which she had previously been denied access. Um, very much trying to celebrate Mayan Indian heritage and navigating contemporary um, visions of indigenous people, this ever evolving self image. Um, and so she made this entire magazine stating that sort of if she didn't create it, um, that no one would have sort of put her in these spaces um, because it just wasn't something that was being done. Um, and she wanted to portray herself in a particular way and so created this um, series of um, sort of magazine edits and images, which are just stunning. And it's very much modeled after the interview magazine. Um, and you can see sort of the script as well as sort of the graphicness of the images. Very much kind of wanting to reflect on some of the Andy Warhol style, um, as well as sort of the general images portrayed in Indigenous Women, um, as well as sort of showing these images um, in advertisements as well. She 
she also wanted to draw on um, and to subvert um, white Western standards of beauty. What better way to do this um, than through their own sort of medium? Um, she also asks sort of serious questions like, what makes a native-born woman? How is this subverted or otherwise? Um, stating, I'm asking what signifies a real authentic native-born woman. It is a critique and simultaneous investigation of what claim over these labels, stereotypes, and iconographies I have. Through the style and construct of the glossy magazine, Gutierrez subverts conventional ideas of beauty to reveal how deeply sexism, racism, transphobia, and other biases are embedded in our culture um, and has sort of done this successfully through um, this series. And they're, I mean, they're insanely gorgeous images. Um, very much playful, surrealist, um, very much kind of breaking down all of these interesting boundaries and creating this sort of graphically, shockingly gorgeous um, imagery. And yes, for definitely, um, for her trying to investigate this sort of post-colonial society, the marginalized um, of genuine selfhood, uh, try to probe me into the depths of her own identity as a social construction and what that kind of means as well. And again, she's also done sort of general spreads um, that are um, in actual magazines, quote unquote. Um, and so that is a part of it as well. She's also done works that are sort of more um, coincide with typical kind of fashion industry images, um, but definitely makes sort of a satirical, comedic, um, I don't know, statements or sort of like posing with sort of cantaloupe breasts or coconut breasts or whatever they are. Um, no, they definitely not coconut. I don't know what she has in there. Um, or posing with this mannequin here as well. Um, which is extended out into some of her other work as well, such as sort of making fake advertisements like this one um, for Cover Girl, but it is Covert Girl, Pass as a Woman, um, as well as Diam. You'll be just as lonely in Diamonds. Or this one, which I think is for Soap. She's also played with this construct in her anti-icon series. Um, she asks, am I a woman? What does being a woman mean? Um, as she considers herself sort of this trans woman, it's probably something I'll never stop asking myself. So she kind of took these old images of sort of ancient figures um, and recreated them in this sort of different way um, to recontemplate sort of her connection with these um, very important, important historical figures such as like Helena or Judith um, or who else I got in here? Godiva, Sheba. So re looking at herself um, through their eyes um, and thinking about sort of these women who were considered sort of powerful and brilliant um, but also sort of mythological and not real. Um, and she also exhibited them on these um, like bus shelters. So obviously she's made a name for herself. She has become sort of part um, and um, has images in sort of traditional magazine spreads. Um, but it still kind of stands that she's still contemplating these ideas, um, creating films that kind of contemplate them as well. Um, and so uh, this is some of her most recent work from 2021. 